Hey man, y'all got that one friend, maybe that one quintessential bro that approaches you at the gym. So this is my gym, Papa. Yeah, I don't talk about the dude in the stringer that's like, hey man, I'm 5% all the time. 5% body fat just all year round, man. Cause I'm so cut, Pablo. I'm just so cut. God, I I hate that. I cannot stand that. What's going on, by the way? Welcome back to the channel. This is CJ, and I'm giving you guys another savage coaching video. More specifically, today we're going to be talking about body fat percentages, aka body composition. And I'm going to be getting into the different ways that you can have this tested and why more than likely your bro ain't walking around at 5% all year round. Let's get into it. Yo, what's up guys, CJ here, back with another Savage Coaching video. And today we're gonna to be talking about body fat percentage and body composition. But before we get to that, if you're new here to the Primeval Labs YouTube channel, we wanna welcome you and encourage you to stick around by subscribing and hitting that bell notification. And if you are one of the regulars and you don't know what Savage Coaching is, basically this is my video series that I put together so that I can give you guys some tips and tricks to help you out on your fitness journey. As you could imagine, I'm gonna give it in my unfiltered, savage way. Look at you, with your fucking 48% body fat and you scrounged little bastard. So if you're looking for like a more PC coaching video, like this ain't it. There might be a couple of F-bombs here and there. Anyway, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about body fat percentage, or to be more accurate, body composition. So basically what we're made up of, lean mass, fat mass, etc. Most of you guys watching this are probably interested in what your body composition is because you're probably a gym rat. I mean, we're a supplement company, that's who we attract. I'm one of you. So we're all a bunch of gym bros, I hear you. So what you're probably curious about is what is the most accurate and effective way of getting your body composition tested? See, back in the day, it was just skin full calipers, right? Like that was basically it, or maybe circumference measurements. But in 2018, we got all kinds of ways of testing your body composition. I mean, we've got hydrostatic weighing, we've got air displacement, we've got BIAs, we've even got x-rays that I'm gonna talk about. So it's a little bit confusing because everybody seems to be marketing their way as the most accurate and consistent way. So I wanna get into that in today's video. I wanna explain my experience with each and every one of the ones that I just listed, give you guys the good, the bad, and what I recommend are my thoughts. As long as you don't have a gut, you have abs. All right, first things first, let's talk about skin fold calipers because that is the OG, or at least my understanding, it seems like it was one of the first ones out there. And it's still around to this day. Basically, skin fold calipers is where you see the trainers using the pinchers, right? It's basically trying to use skin thickness to predict body fat percentage. And there's lots of different ways of doing this. I mean, they have three site tests, seven site tests, and even nine site tests. Each one has a specific equation, attached to it. Just to give you an example, okay, for males in a three-site traditional skin fold test, you're gonna be measuring the side of the pec right here, so you're gonna have a pinch here, you're gonna have one to the right side of the belly button, and then you're also gonna have one mid-quad. And they're gonna take each one of those measurements, plug it into this equation, it's gonna give you a prediction of what your fat mass is and your fat-free mass. Oh, I probably should have given you those terms first, okay? So fat mass obviously is the total amount of fat on your body. Fat free mass is everything that is not fat. So don't confuse that with just muscle. When somebody says like, oh yeah, I'm 150 pounds of fat free mass, doesn't necessarily mean you're 150 pounds of muscle. We have to separate those things. All right, so back to the skin folds though. What's the problem? What's my experience with them? Look, keeping it real, I've been a personal trainer for, God, going on like 12 years, maybe 11, 12 years. And back in the day when I went through personal training certification, school, which I actually did a hands-on school, which is a little rare. A lot of people do it online, but I actually went to a program where we actually went Monday through Friday. And skin fold calipers were a part of that. We actually had to go through this. So that was the first way that I learned how to test body fat percentage. And I spent several years actually doing that. As a matter of fact, I actually ended up teaching other trainers how to do it. And I do think it's a great skill to have, but it's a little bit archaic. I mean, it's a little bit old school. And I've heard some really awesome intellectuals in this industry talk about the fact that they still use them. I think Lane Norton might actually be one of them. God, I hope I'm not getting that wrong, but I feel like he did a video where he's talking about still using skin folds. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right, but here's the problem, okay? First things first, we've got to think about fat distribution. 
As you all know, fat distribution is very unique to each and every person. That's right, we're all a bunch of special little fucking flowers. And depending on what flower you actually are, you might store more fat in your stomach, maybe on your ass, your hips, maybe your triceps. And so it's possible that you could actually skew these results just depending on where you distribute fat. What's even more interesting is you would think that the more sites you pinch, the more accurate, right? Well, actually, some of the research that I ran across suggested that the more sites, the less accurate it was. I think the reason behind that is because you start to open up the door for more inconsistencies, right? Which brings me to my second point, which is operator error. If you are not skilled in practice with skin folds, which a lot of people just aren't, it's very rare that I run across somebody that's really efficient and surgical about actually using the skin folds correctly and consistently. And this can drastically sway your results. From the practical side, what is my experience? Well, I like to think that I'm very consistent and pretty good at doing skin folds, but even so, it seems to me that 90% of the clients that I use skin folds with show a much leaner body fat percentage than what they actually are. And in some cases, substantially leaner. Just to give you an example, in probably one of the most shredded shapes of my life, okay, I was right about to do a bodybuilding show, I did skin folds compared to a DEXA scan, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. The DEXA scan had me at about 6.4 or 6.2%. Skin folds showed me at literally 1.2. Now look, that's a big difference and it is completely unreasonable that I'm walking around at 1.2% body fat. That's stupid. Now look, shredded as fuck, but like that's, that's crazy. That's, that's unreasonable. It's not possible. I'm not, it's not happening. All right, so let's push past skin folds. Okay, so that's skin folds. The next one that I want to talk about is BIA. Now BIA stands for bioelectrical impedance analysis. I know that sounds like a fucking big ass term. That's why we just call it BIA. There's no reason to have to repeat the bioelectrical impedance analysis. BIA is basically, it's one of those handheld devices you see or the scales that you stand on where you have to have your shoes off. Of course, to take it even further, there's certain things like the in-body test, which you guys may have seen at some of the, like the complete nutritions and stuff like that where you actually stand on it and you hold on to it so you got multiple different electrodes. And yes, I said electrodes because how it works is it basically sends a painless electrical signal through your body. And depending on the rate at which this signal circulates around, it's trying to make a prediction on fat mass versus lean mass. Now look, I'll be the first one to say that I'm a big fan of BIAs for a couple of reasons. Most notable reason is the fact that they're not evasive. See, with the skin fold calipers in a real life scenario, I've got to ask my overweight soccer mom to, hey, can you pick up your shirt while I pinch your stomach? And, and that's just uncomfortable for her and me and it's weird. And with a BIA, typically you're fully dressed. It's really quick. It's, it's just, it's easy. And I like that. I also like that it starts to remove some of the human component out of the inconsistencies. I mean, with skin folds, again, you've got the trainer that you're trusting that knows how to actually do it correctly. And even then, are they consistent time after time. BIAs, we're working with a machine here, so more than likely, it's gonna be pretty consistent. That brings me to my problems with the BIA. Look, I got problems with just about all of them, okay? So I'm gonna keep it real with you. None of them are gonna be perfect. That's the spoiler alert. But this one is very particular because with the BIA specifically, the big issue is the fact that it is highly skewed based off of hydration how salty a meal you had the night before, how much water you drank before you came in there. And in some cases, like the, just the handheld ones, even just holding your arms closer to you will actually skew the results. It'll make you a lot leaner if you wanna cheat the system. On top of that, the ones that aren't the feet and the hands, okay, so the typically the cheaper ones, those Omron ones you see on Amazon and stuff, usually they're only measuring a segment of your body. So like this one, it's only my upper body. Or the scale, it's only the lower division. And so it's not considering if I have fat distribution elsewhere. So that's the BIA, okay? It's got some pros, it's got some cons. Let's move on to the next two. I'm gonna combine these two together. And that's gonna be the hydrostatic weighing, which we all know from like, remember the original Biggest Loser? I don't know if they kept doing it through the seasons, but I remember like in the very beginning they were using the dunk tank, you know? And on top of that, there's something called a bod pod, which is basically like an air displacement machine. Now the reason I'm lumping them together is because they're incredibly similar. In my experience, the cost is about the same. Maybe the bod pod's a little bit cheaper, a little bit more convenient, because it's usually like 
somewhere you could go all the time when the hydrostatic a lot of times attached to like these trucks and stuff that travel around and you gotta schedule an appointment. But besides that, basically what these things are doing is they're trying to take total body density and actually give you a measurement. Look, this is a pretty accurate way of actually getting your body fat tested. I would actually say that both of these are similarly accurate and I think they're pretty good. But my problem with them is, especially with the dunk tank, those of us that actually lift weight regularly, which is probably all you guys watching this video right now, we typically have denser bones than the average person. And neither of these tests can take into consideration bone mineral density. So what ends up happening is we're a little heavier in the water, so we're less buoyant, right? And it's assuming that we're leaner than what we actually are. We're giving you a prediction that is kind of skewing towards the leaner side of things. Hey, if you want to feel better about yourself, you're like, man, I want, what test makes me look the leanest? Like go, I mean, I would go to the dunk tank for sure. Hydrostatic would be my, my way to go. Which brings me to the final one, which I personally consider the gold standard. I think some people will say that the, you know, the bod pods are the gold standard. I think I've even heard people say the end bodies are gold standard, which that, that drives me fucking nuts. But personally, I think that the DEXA scan has to take the award for most accurate and most consistent and most specific, really. So the DEXA scan basically is a dual x-ray machine. Yes, you literally go into like a sports lab or a hospital, somewhere where they would have an x-ray machine like this. Typically, it's gonna be more expensive. You're gonna to have to actually schedule an appointment. Here in Austin, you can schedule an appointment and it's gonna cost you about 100 bucks your first go around, then maybe like 70, 75 dollars for each additional one. You gotta go all the way down to the University of Texas to their like sports center to get this done. It's a really cool experience, but it's definitely out of the way. It's not convenient. All right, so anyway, this DEXA scan basically is x-raying your body and it's giving you measurements at different segments of the body. Specifically, it was designed for bone mineral density. So it's trying to predict things like osteopenia, which is the, the predisposition to osteoporosis. But what's cool about it, it can also make predictions on fat mass and lean mass. It's the only one really that I found online anyway that is kind of a three compartment test. The other ones are basically doing two compartmental tests, right? They're only checking two different things while this is actually seeing three things. Again, Again, specifically considering bone mineral density in the equation. What's cool about it, okay? Literally, when you actually lay down and the scanner goes over the top of you, you get a printed out piece of paper that you can see your skeleton, your fat mass, your lean mass. I, you can know exactly where your fat is distributed and what part of your body or how much muscle tissue you have on different segments. Really fucking cool. I would suggest doing it if you're into this kind of stuff. It's, it's cool. Okay, so what would I do if I was coaching somebody? Okay, how would I be tracking their results? What, what, what would this look like? All right, let's say that I'm getting somebody ready for a bodybuilding show, okay? And we're doing like, like I said, 25, let's say we're doing a 25 week prep. In the very beginning, the first thing I'm gonna bring up is the fact that they could go get a DEXA scan done, go ahead and spend the money, get the gold standard test, because what's awesome about that is we have the most valid, you know, most respectable method and the most specific method right there so we can see your initial results. I also, at the very end of it, okay, maybe the week before they're going to go on stage, say schedule another one so we can go in and we can compare the two. That's just really cool to look at. Now, do I require that? Absolutely not. Does that keep me from getting them ready and being shredded? Absolutely not. I just think that honestly, those methods are really cool for comparing and contrasting like the total transformation and they're, they're the most respected and most valid tests. So why not have that to look at in the end? So in between there, what would I do? Well, personally, I don't just lean on body fat percentage whenever I'm tracking a client's results. I will track body fat percentage and typically I will use either a skin full caliper, just a simple three site skin full caliper test, or I will do a basic BIA test and something like maybe the, the scale handheld one you can get on Amazon, okay? So they have like 50, 60 bucks. It has a scale and a little handheld deal. It's a, it's a bioelectrical impedance analysis. You can pick one of those up. I will do one or the other. Personally, I like to use the BIA over the skin folds just because again, it's less evasive. But assuming that we're using the skin folds, what I'll make sure to do is I'm measuring the client at the same time of day in a fasted state each time and I'm always the one administering the test. This just takes all the pains out of potential swaying of the numbers. Still not perfect, they might be bloated one day or there might be something off. I mean, it still could be skewed, but try to do everything possible to make it as consistent as possible. Same thing with the BIA, if we're using that, okay, I make sure that it's always the same machine. I'm not switching machines. Also, I do the same thing with the scale, okay? Make sure you're on the same scale each time. You don't switch scales. But we're always gonna use the same machine and I'm always gonna make sure that, again, you're in a fasted, consistent state. This way, we know that 
assuming that the machine is going to be consistent itself, that we should be getting you know valid numbers trending into this. But here's the here's the big thing. Okay, I make sure that they understand that just because it says 15% body fat, that it doesn't necessarily mean that it's an accurate 15%. But if it's consistent and that 15% is going down to 13, going down to 12, going down to 10, all right, we're trending in the right direction. That's what's important. Are we going the right way? So the number in itself is really just relative to me. It's not super important that it's exactly accurate. And I always have to make sure that they know that because we'll be testing it with like say a BIA the whole way and then when they go get tested with their DEXA scan at the end, they're like, holy shit, I thought I, I, thought I was 5%, man. Sorry, bro, it's, it, you know, it's just a number though. Which brings me to my next point, okay? Your bro that walks around at 5%. Look, here's the deal, guys. The leanest I've ever been in my life, and I'm not pretending that I'm Mr. Olympia, okay? Or I'm some sort of genetic freak, you know? But the most shredded I've ever been in my life, okay? Where I, I could see through my abs like tissue paper. I weighed in around 155 pounds, and the DEXA scan had me at 6.2% body fat. Now, with that said, okay, let's back up because if I had more muscle mass, then that percentage would go down. But it's not just me that I'm making these assumptions off of, okay? I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of different clients, a lot of which were bodybuilders and some of the most elite shape out there. The leanest, the leanest DEXA scan that I have ever seen, ever personally with my own eyes, I'm not saying there's not others that exist, but the leanest I've ever seen in my life was a guy named Chuck. And Chuck was somewhere in the low fives, okay? He was like 5.2 or 5.4% or something like that. And I was there for that, actually. I have video footage of it. It's by far the leanest. And the guy sitting there, okay, the director of the Fitness Institute at the University of Texas said, this is the leanest that he's seen. Now, I'm not saying it's impossible that you got a bro and a stringer walking around goals saying, look, I'm 5% all the time, dog. I'm 5%. But that motherfucker would be like a fraction of a percent of the population. So it's it's probably unlikely. All right, that's it for today's video. If you like this stuff, I know it was a long one, but still, give me a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. We got more Savage Coaching videos coming up. I would love to also hear your suggestions, man. Y'all want to? Is there something y'all want me to talk about? I'm out of here, guys. Now we're gonna go and I'm gonna go finish my Modelo and tequila shots and I'm gonna probably get a couple more fucking tacos.